they don't want you to know this. If you want to own a home or are currently a homeowner, take 60 seconds to pay attention to this. What's up everybody, welcome back to another reaction and fact checking. I've got another Facebook video sent to me by my buddy who thinks everything is a conspiracy. Everything they teach you in school is a lie. I'm enjoying reacting and fact checking these Facebook videos from my friend. If you want to know the backstory, check out my Illuminati video, which will be on an end card at the end of the video. All right, before we jump into this, I'd appreciate it if you guys could hit those like and subscribe buttons. I'm a relatively new channel and really do appreciate every single like and new subscriber. All right, looks like we have RFK Jr. This should be interesting. Let's see what he's got to say. Wait, there's three giant corporations, BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard, which own collectively, they own each other, so it's really one giant corporation, but they also own 89% of the S&P 500. Hmm. They own everything. What? These three companies own 89% of the S&P 500? There's no way. Okay, well, let's keep going. They've now decided to, to buy every single family home in America. Okay, good luck with that. Oh, so if they stay on the current trajectory, they will own 60% of the homes in this country, single family homes by 2030. What? 2030? That's in six years. They'll own 60% of all the single family homes in America by 2030. I wonder when this video is actually from. I, I suppose it's recent, but I don't actually know. I don't want to keep saying no way, but there's no way. Let's keep going. They literally are trying to buy everything. And, and uh, the head of it, Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, is on the board of the World Economic Forum. And what they, you know, they've said, we want this great reset, which is you will own nothing and you will be happy. Well, they're on. How is that a reset? That doesn't, I don't get that. What is, how, in what way is that a reset? And how would we own nothing and be happy? On their way to making sure that we don't own anything. So you all <laughs> probably have heard of people who are about to buy a home mm -hmm. and somebody comes in with, at the last minute with a cash, cash or, uh, mm -hmm. offer and, and snatches off the, out of the market. Right. And it's usually an LLC with an ambiguous name. I've recently bought a home and no one tried to come in and snatch any of the homes I was looking at with a cash offer. The other thing is, a cash offer, is that really something that matters? By cash offer, they don't mean cash like paper money. They mean no loan from the buyer, right? So the buyer didn't have to go get a loan. They had the money in the bank and they're able to buy the house, quote unquote cash, right? But does it really matter to the seller? Who cares? The buyer is coming with a check either way, and they're coming with a certified check to the closing for the full amount. Paying cash matters if you're literally paying cash. That's not what's going on here. There's no tax savings by paying cash. Who cares? But if you trace that up, you'll find it's owned by BlackRock. Wow. And more importantly, there's three giant oh, corporations. That's the end, okay. I don't think it's at all possible that three companies own 89% of the S&P 500. That is insane. And owning 60% of all the homes in six years, one of my neighbors, is the house going to be bought by BlackRock? Actually, 60%, and it's basically two out of the three homes here. Maybe they'd be buying mine too. I don't, I don't think so. Anyway, I shouldn't keep saying I don't think so. Let me do some research. Let me look into this, and I will be back in a moment. One eternity later. Okay, I'm back. And wow, I had no idea how popular this notion of institutional investors or Wall Street buying up homes was or is. It seems BlackRock is kind of the poster child for this. So first, let's review the things RFK said in this video. He started out by saying there are three companies, BlackRock, Vanguard, and State Street, that own 89% of the S&P 500. But they also own 89% of the S&P 500. They own everything. If you don't know, the S&P 500 is a market index, or essentially just a list of the 500 most valuable companies on the US Stock Exchange. As you can imagine, owning almost 90% of the S&P 500 would be outrageous. So I looked it up and currently these 500 companies combined are worth roughly $43 trillion. To put that into perspective, 
Elon Musk recently bought Twitter for $44 billion, which means it would take 977 Elons and co. combined to purchase 89% of the S&P 500. Interestingly, BlackRock and State Street are on the S&P 500 list. Now, if you're under the impression that BlackRock is a multi-trillion dollar company, they're not. There's something called the Trillion Dollar Club, aka companies that are worth over a trillion dollars, and there are only five members. Apple, followed by Microsoft, Alphabet, aka Google, Amazon, and NVIDIA. Tesla and Meta joined the club in 2021, but their membership was only temporary as they were booted the following year as their market caps dropped below the trillion dollar threshold. As of December 2023, it's true that BlackRock does manage $10 trillion in client assets and has a stock market value of, or market cap of $123 billion, which is what it would cost for you to be able to walk into BlackRock headquarters and tell everyone, Everybody, if I can just have a second. I just wanted to update you on a couple of developments. You're, you're all fired. Wait, what? But unless you're one of like three people in the world, that's not an option. However, good news. State Street can be all yours for just $22 billion. What a bargain. Vanguard is hard to know because it's a private company and it's not publicly traded. However, it manages $7.6 trillion in client assets, making it a close peer to BlackRock, which has led to estimates of approximately $90 billion. So this gives us a combined total of roughly $235 billion or 185 billion pounds if you're from the motherland. So you don't need to be a mathematician to notice that the math doesn't add up. How is it possible that these three companies, which combined are worth roughly $235 billion, own 89% of the $43 trillion S&P 500? Well, it's not. Not even close. So what the hell is RFK talking about? So it turns out he's mischaracterizing a 2017 study that found that together, the three firms are the largest shareholders in 88% of the S&P 500 firms. Now, there's such an enormous difference between the two, I need to explain so you can see how wrong the statement by RFK actually is. Being the largest shareholder means what it says. They own more shares than any other individual or firm. That in most cases, the largest shareholder owns less than 10% of the shares. For example, Vanguard is the largest shareholder of Apple stock with over 1 billion shares. This represents, though, only 6.5% ownership of the company. But it's true these three do have a lot of shares in many of the largest companies on the S&P 500. For example, State Street, Vanguard, and BlackRock are the top shareholders in Lockheed Martin. Pfizer's top shareholders are, well, you guessed it, Vanguard, BlackRock, and State Street, in that order. So they have a decent amount of shares, maybe 5 to 6% in a lot of these companies. But that's nowhere near the 89% ownership claimed by RFK. And this is an important distinction. The shares actually belong to their clients, including almost everyone with a 401k. They're not really theirs, and they definitely don't go out buying up stakes in companies with their own money. All right, so we've established that this claim that the three companies own everything, including 89% of the S&P 500, is objectively false. A perfect example of fake news, in my opinion. We are fighting the fake news. It's fake, phony, fake. But let's move on to the next claim. They've now decided to to buy every single family home in America. So if they stay on the current trajectory, they will own 60% of the homes in this country, single family homes by 2030. Houston, we have a problem. It turns out RFK is mixing up two companies. BlackRock is not in the business of buying up single family homes. That would be another company, Blackstone. And I know they sound similar and there's a history there, but the connection between BlackRock and Blackstone ended in 1994, 30 years ago. Still, the resulting backlash endured by BlackRock got so out of hand that they had to post this to their website. BlackRock and housing, setting the record straight. We want to make it perfectly clear BlackRock is not buying individual houses in the US. So BlackRock is getting blamed for something Blackstone is allegedly doing. Now, I'm not in the business of defending multi-billion dollar companies, but we need to get our facts straight. That aside, if RFK ever managed to get the name right, is he correct about them attempting to buy all the single family homes? Well, here's some stats. The U.S. has roughly 140 million houses or housing units. Of those 140 million, about 80 million are standalone single-family homes, which is what RFK was referring to. Now, out of those 80 million, about 15 million are rental properties. Of those 15 million single-family rentals, institutional investors, a.k.a. private equity firms, a.k.a. Wall Street, own about 300,000. Most of the rest, which is the other 13.7 million, are owned by individual landlords. 
Now, quick disclaimer, there are differing opinions on what separates an institutional investor from an individual landlord. Usually it comes down to how many rental properties you own, but where do you draw the line? Some say it's more than 10, others say more than 100 makes you an institutional investor. It's a subjective thing. That said, regardless of how you define it, these companies are definitely not swooping in and snatching up people's homes. Now, I'm sure tons of you are already letting me know how wrong I am, and that's fine. Let me know. But getting back to this video for a moment, basically everything he said was objectively false. He comes across as genuine, and I suspect he very likely believes what he's saying for whatever that's worth. Now, I want to like RFK, but it's brutal that he gets this so wrong. I could get into the data and percentages reported by CoreLogic, etc., but that wasn't the point of this video. It was to react and fact check RFK, so that's going to do it for this video. Let me know in the comments below if there's something here I need to look into further. But either way, BlackRock, Vanguard, and State Street do not own 89% of the S&P 500, and they are not trying to buy your home and rent it back to you. This is pretty much a definition of a conspiracy theory, and it's not true. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, hit those like and subscribe buttons, and I'll see you in your next one. Peace.